okay what's up you come back a little video and in this video it's gonna be two parts to this video uh, the first video I'm gonna be using these two books the Sibyls the first prophecies of mommy water by author mama Zogby the theft of African prophecy by the Catholic Church and her first volume mommy water Af ancient uh, Africa's ancient goddess unveiled and then in, in uh, the second video I'm going to use uh, book two okay now to set the stage to set the stage we're going to be coming from this book right here the Donovan's compact Bible dictionary just to just to set the foundation to show that the uh, we know that all these people are black skinned people dark skinned people the Egyptians the Hebrews the Moors uh, Chinese people uh, 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 the uh, Euro, uh, the original European was, was black skin was dark skin um, you have uh, uh, all these people are black with dark skinned people so called white white skin pale skin they come on the scene to about 6,000 years ago they give it roughly 6,000 to 4,000 years ago so we talking about pre so if you talking about pre flood pre before the flood one of the white people one, one, uh, there wasn't any white people on the scene I'm not saying this to be racist. I'm stating facts. I'm going to upload this on BitChute just in case YouTube try to take this video down. So we're going to look up the word and the we're going to look up this word here um, ruddy and the Donovan's Confide Bible Dictionary. Right? And I know, I know I'm going to get a lot of slack, but you have to you men have to get off that egotistical Machoism, machoism bullshit because that's not that's not the route it's the more it's the woman the great mother now we're gonna go here to the word called one second right here you can see that it says ruddy a word used to refer to a red or fair complexion in contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. Now the Hebrews, they don't get a pass either. Because when I once I read this to you, they don't get a pass. They was in on it, they was involved in it too. The Muslims, they were involved in it too. Okay? But before I do that, I want to play this clip for you. Now listen to this. This is gonna sound very familiar to what I to a video I had did uh, two years ago. And you all came against me and said I was talking crazy, talking nonsense. America came along with Elijah Muhammad, and we needed that at that time. You see what I'm saying? We needed them facts. I mean, not fact, but we needed that science at that time to raise us up. Of course, we wasn't calling ourselves God because we was calling ourselves Inger, Nigga, Naga. Not stop. Key. You're Stop. When you go to my channel, what's the very first video I did? One of the very first videos I did. The ancient name for God is nigger. The second N word. This is two. This is two years ago. This is two years ago. I did a video on the the Negro question challenge. The sacred word nigger. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I exposed the name Jehovah, and she talks about that in this book. Let's keep on going. You understand what I'm saying? Netta, Netja. You see what I'm saying? Because we spoke another language. Every language that we are speaking uh -oh, now. Uh oh, the highest uh oh, oh, Zadnetta. The highest of all creations. Then we should be emulating that very thing, which is the highest of all the combination of cultural science. I don't I have no set date, but you don't really know how to break that down. We've always been here, but uh -oh. of course not in this physical. What you drop was deep as a. I ain't gonna drop my. Let me get out of that God and devil concept, man, because that's not real. Now listen to this. Well, not I real. did it. I can't watch. Because I know the very origin Thank of you. these words. Thank you. See, I rest because my case. Because I know the very origin of the word, <laughs> God and you. devil, I can give you the, the, the D note of the word. Mm. The word devil. Yes, so you're Satan in your Bible in the New Testament. The woman, the dragon, the serpent, that's the black woman. They have tricked you all. You've been tricked. 
And all these people, all these people on here talking, talking this, this Hebrew Israelite camp bullshit. You are so out of loop. You are so confused. It's ridiculous. You're confused. And, and wait till I bring it out. I'm going to show you who was going against the black woman. Why, why did she, if she was in power, how did she fall? You can't blame the white man because the white man wasn't on the scene. So who did it? We did this to ourselves. Well, I ain't going to say, well, I wasn't born back then, but I can only speak on the information I'm reading. And it's making a lot of sense. Let's keep on going. Silly shit right now. Go ahead. The word devil is the vilification. Now, I just did the video a couple hours ago talking about this stuff. Shit of the goddess. And how do we know that? Told you. Every word that deals with demon, devil, Satan, Lucifer, are all names of the goddess. The mm. word devil comes from the Indo-European word Devi. The trilateral root of the word is the word Deva, D-E-V. You have the culmination of the word Devi and El, a Hebrew word that means God. It's the same with the word evil. The name Eve in Hebrew means the mother of all creation. Then you have the Hebrew vernacular El, which means God. So when you say evil, you are saying female or mother God. You understand what I'm saying to you? So when you say evil, Tahuti said when you... Okay. Now, go back and watch my video so you can get up to date. You got to get up to speed, man. You got to get up to speed. Um, go back and watch this video I put up month and month ago on um, religious texts admit that the black woman supreme being. Now, this is my first time of hearing of, hearing of this woman's works. Right? And in her book, she's referencing, she's using the book that I that I used my video on just just a couple hours ago that I did this video on. Uh Barbara C Barbara Barbara Walker, Encyclopedia of, of, of Myths and Stickers of, of Women. Right? To show you here, when you go here to the Sybils, the first prophets of Mommy Watson, let's go to the back here, right? And and this is her her uh her, her references, her, her, her sources, right? And we're going to go here. One second. Um, right here. So I got a star right there. The women's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets, New York, 1983. See, when you read books and people put out these claims and assertions, you should be able to go into your, your, your library, your, ars your arsenal, and pull out the very same book that, that they're reading, that they're quoting from, and, and the stuff that they, that they write. And that's what I do my child. I bring nothing but raw facts. I'm not, I'm not charging you niggas a dime. And you got people on here char charging you niggas $50, $500, $500 for some lessons, for some classes. You niggas are crazy. So, let's read some of this. I'm going to post this on my uh, BitChu channel, and this is going to be the first video. Okay? So, we're going to go right here. Right? I can't read it all. I'm going to read only just a, a, a brief a snippet of it. because You know what I'm saying? It's up for you to read the information on your own and come to your own conclusion. Um... So I want to go here. Let's see here. Let's go here to. We're going to go here to the introduction. Okay. So this is the introduction. It says before there was Jehovah. Remember I did that video month to month ago, a year, a year, a year or two ago. For, uh, uh, tearing that name Jehovah down or Yahweh. So it says, before there was Jehovah, or Jehovah, right? Or Yahweh, Yahweh, a minor volcano, fire, thunder deity, elevated as, quote, God, under uh, under afro Ephraim or Hebrew, or Jewish pat patriarchy, there was Mommy Isis, as the preeminent dual goddess and God, 
who dominated the entire ancient world. For more than 6,000 years, nearly all of Africa was uh, uh, maternity or, or matriarchal. The dominant presence of African matriarchy resulted not as a consequence of political feminist or military usurpation, uh, 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 usurpation, but rather because it was the original and more importantly, the, the, the natural divine order of the African civilized world. Its, cosmo its cosmo uh, cosmology, philosophy, theology, ritual practices, and the rich African culture uh, uh, emphasize the commentary relationship between what has come to be known as the, quote, masculine and feminine divine as it exists in both nature and within the universe. Um, we're going to drop down here. And it says, the first prophets of Mami Wata, the first prophets of Mami were African women or black women. They were called Sibyls, meaning they were from Mami Wata. Wata's water. Uh, they were Mami Wata priestesses and priests of the Oanus. Their prophecies are the oldest in the world. It is through the divine blood of these civil priestesses that the patriarchal kingship of the pharaohs, the Hebrew prophets, and the Chaldean priests are born. So, your prophecies, your prophecies in your Bible in the Old Testament came from black women, but they, but, but their works got plagiarized. It says here that. Um, it was the Sybil style of prophecy and magic that would later be imitated by the militant faction from these groups. So we can't blame the white man. Ain't no white man on the scene pre doing the pre flood, so called pre flood. Ain't no ain't no white skin there. It's only dark. It's only dark skin, brown skin people. So if the if the black woman is ruling the world, how did how did she fall? What what what? How did she how did she uh how did she could decline from her rule rulership on the throne. Let's go. Let's see. I see that. Um, it was from. It says uh, it was the civil style of, of prop, pro, uh, prophecy and magic that would later be imitated by the militant faction from these groups, who envious of her global positioning, rebelled against these divine matriarchal orders and seized their temples and overthrew their priestess priestesshood as patriarchy began to dominate you know you know the song by James Brown this is a man's world no nah, no nah, he got that wrong it was a woman and their jealousy hatred and rebellion of their of her divine authority the Levitical Jews or Hebrews elevated their original minor deity Jehovah as an insult to her. Together, quote, Jehovah and his patriarchal, patri patriarchal clan usurped her sacerdotal and secular power, and from that moment on, they have worn it as their own. They did not create a new logos or word. They simply corrupted and repackaged the original as laid forth by the divine African mother. See that? Since their unauthorized accusation of her divine authority, there has been little peace in the world. Because they have demonized the voice of her prophetess and continue to enslave and, and oppress her prophets and people, there has been no divine prophecy. All that remains are hopeless corruptions of her original logos and and weak imitators such as Nostradamus and her divine her divine prophetic style, a style originally developed by the Sibyls and those of her uh, and those of her secret priesthood. Um, the Jews or the Hebrews, whom after the fifth century B.C. E. for long could neither speak nor understand Hebrew, nor the ancient esoteric philosophy of Mami attempted to decipher the original cuneiform tablets of the black Canaanites that predate the Hebrew language. 
Their crude translations deliberately corrupted many of the ancient names of the black goddesses and changed the original esoteric meanings of their prophecies to what exists now in the Torah and the Pentateuch. So your prophecies is in that goddamn Torah and that Bible is bullshit. It's bullshit. Bullshit. They lied to you. They lied to you. They lied to you. The serpent, the dragon is the woman. In the Revelations, it said the serpent, the dragon, that's the woman. The black woman. Let's keep on going. Because you got to get the book on your own to read the information. Let's read this shit. It says here that the first Genesis, when goddesses spoke through the African woman. It says here, someplace, let's, let's read this. It says, this is Irethian Sybil, 2802 BC. She said this. They will say that the Sybil is mad. A deceitful, but all things shall come to pass. Then ye will remember me, and no one, and no one will any longer say that I, the prophetess of the great goddess, am mad. Um... It says, the Sibyls are descendants of the first Neolithic clans of African warrior queens, healers, prophetesses, and priestesses who were on the first ship built by the goddess to establish, quote, the new world after the great flood. It says, patriarchal, all history only records there being men, namely Noah and his three racially different sons. However, this is mythical and political, not historical. These three sons were all African or black, and there and there and there were African women, high priestesses called sibyls, who would issue forth the who would issue, issue who was issued forth the, the 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 instructions from the divine African mother, mommy as God, on how to build a build a argos or ark, and the, and giving forth the prophecy pertaining to quote the end of their world as they knew it in ancient Babylon. All tradition has it that when man revolted against the authority of mommy, they separated themselves from the divine African mother. And one Afro-Chaldean, Reiki, ancient Babylonian account, mommy is worshipped as the goddess, or Ruru or Ishtar. Ishtar meaning queen or lady. It's not a proper name, but... Rather, one of the oldest, one, rather one of her one of her oldest appellations. It says, "Quote: Mommy is the holy, honorific, honorific title denoting great reverence attributed to any African goddess, particularly of the waters." Okay. Um. So these black doves were were the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now let's keep on going. Um, we're gonna go here. That's a lot I can go into, right? So it says, Origin of the name Sybil. The name Sybil is of mixed origins, it is the sacred, uh, uh, initiatory title that the ancient Africans called the prophetess, prophets, and, and priestesses of the mommy waters. According to some, it is derived from the black Ethiopian Kushites known as the Phrygians. Natives of the Mycenae. Their name of endearment was Mommy for Sybil, Queen of Heaven, Mother of the Gods. Some scholars believe that Sybil is a Greek corruption of two words, soul meaning God and boo meaning to confuse, to, I mean to counsel. Both words were derived from their Afro uh, uh, elliptic dialect of ancient Mycenae. Combined, it reads as sibule, sibyl, which phonetically evolved into the English sibyl. Okay. Um, according to Webster's Dictionary, it defines a sibyl as a female prophet or a woman able to utter the oracles and prophecies of a god or a woman who can foretell the future. Conversely, under the bitter, conversely, under the, under the bitter, Hebrew patriarchs, the Sibyls are condemned in their Bible 
as Bila uh, Behalif Ob, meaning quote evil serpent, spirit, or mistress or mistress of the Python. Who was the serpent in the beginning of the Bible? The black woman. However, when all is said and done, the Sibyls refer to themselves as sisters of Isis and sometimes prophetess of the black Diana. Okay? Um, let's keep on going here. And I want to show you here some images right here. This is from 400 BCE, a red clay vessel of the black Minoan priestesses and corn and corn rolled hair. Corn roll means she has braids, right? During the Greek colonization, the entire cultural, religious, economic, and political substratum uh, of what came to be credited as quote Greek culture was actually that of these black matriarchs who fled. Listen to this. Who fled the patriarchal takeovers in Libya, Egypt, and Ethiopia. So the matriarchs, the women fled from the men because they was taking over Egypt and Libya and Ethiopia. And you got these conscious niggas talking about some, they all talking about Amun Ra and all this shit. They, man. This, this is the, this is the, uh, 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 divide and conquer. Keep in mind, there wasn't any white folks on the scene. Okay. Um, I want to go into. I want to show you some more images, right? You got to read it for yourself. This is Libyan Amazonian queen, right? Penthesilea, who led her army of war of warriors against the Greeks during the Trojan War. She was eventually killed by Achilles, who allegedly found her beauty so re irresistible that her sexuality seduced seduced. Her dead body. One second. Okay, let's keep on going. Um, let's keep on going. Right here. On page 38, history of black matriarchs concealed in the Euro biblical revisionist history. It says, she says, is if African American Christian women knew the untold history behind many of the biblical locations of which they offer their glory, they would be horrified to learn that they were lending a glorious praise to the locations where their ancient mothers were murdered and persecuted and their holy temple seized and converted into quote Christian churches and where their African deities were demonized and their veneration and worship ultimately destroyed it says unraveling the mental shackles of western religious brainwashing affected the colonialism uh, affected by colonialism and slavery is one of the few areas many in the diaspora the, the uh, diaspora ever did a challenge. So they say that we are in the diaspora over in America. It says, few realized that even before the dawn of African patriarchy and the oldest story of Genesis, it was mommy Isis or Aset um, who originally gave birth to the sky and earth and to the waters and to the water divinities. These mythos would later be changed, crediting these events to Osiris and Amun, and then exported into their into their Egyptian colonies, where their names will be honored in the indigenous vernacular as Zeus, Apollo, and Dionysus. The Sibyls, who were from wealthy families, were as a rule the most educated, cultured, and talented amongst their class. However, the most prophetically powerful and richly skilled, skillful Sibyls could be either literate or not able to read or write. You see that? 
the oldest religion in the world is Vudan. Okay? Um, I'm just I'm just going through a couple of sections. Okay? So like you have here you have here the gym shoes called Nike, right? Nike. Nike. You have Nike shoes, right? Nikes or Air Force Ones, right? Nikes. Where do you think this name came from? Nike. The word Nike came from a black woman, a Negro. So that means that whoever owns the Nike company, black folks are supposed to be receiving royalties because black folks came with the, with the name Nike and she was a goddess, she was a woman, a black woman. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Give me one second. Let me see if I can pull this image up. second like here in, in, the, in the book one right in book one here's the original image of Isis see that contemporary image of of, uh, of mommy actually are inspired by her as the divine serpent mother that she is right there um, okay, let's keep on going. So this book right here, the uh, the first prophecies of Mommy Water is is a condensed version of of this. But let's keep on going. Um, so they, she talks about something called the left hand. They say that the left hand path is evil. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. We're going to read it right here. This is an ancient stele of a sibyl from Carthage advertising her, her, uh, advertising her lineage and probably her spiritual services. Right? You can see that. It says, on top. Here's the hand right here. On top. On top. It's the celestial hand of the divine African mother, whom in this uh, uh, stele is Astarte, Tanet, Tani. Below is the holy Orphi, crowned with the solar disk encircled by the uh, sacred rays or twin serpents. The black dove's holy spirit represents the antiquity and uh, lineage of the Orphi. Um... It says, just as in the traditions of the ancient Chaldeans, these uh, the celestial left hand was originally the emblem of the mommy goddess. I write, I write my left hand. I can't write my right. I'm left-handed. It says here that uh, Nehartsar displayed on the Babylonian pyramid on Borsippa under African patriarchy. It was later changed to the right hand of the sun deity, Amun, or Anu, and renamed, quote, the temple of the right hand, or the hand of Anu. However, it was the nurturing and magical left hand of the African mother that led the hand, that led that led to hand emblems being placed atop homes from from uh, from Morocco to Libya to Palestine to to ward off evil. The Christians soon uh, appropriated appropriated this symbol made famous as the hand of God. In Mami Wata Vadum, the left hand is still recognized as the most powerful. Okay, now we're gonna go over here. And we're going to read something. Uh, listen to this. Now listen to this. 
They say that Jesus, God, is on the throne in heaven. Bullshit. That's a lie. Check this out. Um, let's read this. It says the Sibyls influence in ancient Rome. It says although there were other competing patriarchal Gnostic sects, such as the Teutonics, the Gala, Ethiopian Dru Dru Druids, Buddhists, Mithras, and Manicheans, and the Muslims, the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire depended almost exclusively on the civil prophecies and their magical ministrations. Um, the Sibyls, along with their colleague of African diviners, were the Roman Empire's main source of divine and ethical guidance. Uh, eth eth uh, ethical guidance. Okay. Um, uh, ethical guidance. Okay. Uh, it says, see that we're going to drop down here, right? It says, uh, the Roman Emperor Augustus Caesar or Octavian on many occasions sought consultation with the Sibyl Tiburthina in Cume, Cume, Italy, but she would categorically refuse him. She did this because he had just declared himself Caesar, meaning Lord or God of all of Rome and demanded to be addressed as such. This no Sibyl could do. However, under much pressure, Tiburthina was forced to see him. In 27 to 30 BCE, the Roman emperor finally arrived for a den uh, uh, divination and just as the spirit was talking, possessed possession of her. It says, mommy descended and appeared before him. It says, shocked and frightened, at what was next, at, at what was to uh, transpire next, quote, the great Caesar learned quickly who was the true Lord. The emperor was alleged to have exclaimed that he saw the, that he saw the heavens rent open or torn open, and she, the African mother, Isis, or Aset, sitting on an altar, holding a child in her arms. Amazed and in dumbstruck awe, the emperor quickly prostrated himself on the ground before them, offering thanks and praises to God. From that moment onward, Augustus never demanded to be addressed as God or Lord by the African clergy again. Now, what does that sound like? When we go here to the Black Madonna and Child, we go here to the Black Madonna and Child, who is the Pope bound down to? The black woman. So you said the God is a man. Where did he come from? He had to have come from a woman. Um. Yeah, black Madonna. and child. And we will put uh, Pope. So here you go. What's going on here? He's bound down praying to the black woman and the child. We just read this in here. Okay. Let's keep on going. Uh, so he's talking about Rome and things of that nature, right? And it says, after Rome's military success in chasing Hannibal and his army out of Rome, the Caesar kept his promise to the divine African mother. On April 4th, 204 BCE, amongst great pomp and, ce and celebration and uh, replete with plenty of miracles along the journey, the statue uh, Ara Coli, Co uh, meaning altar of heaven, embodied the sacred black Persephone can stone was installed. She was placed in the temple next to the black goddess Nike or Nike victory located on the famous Palatine Hill. So Nike is a black, it's a black woman. You see that? 
How you seen this? You right here. Cast not demons and call upon it, call it upon the dead. The Sibyls were known to affect miraculous cures, credited in today's Judeo-Christian tra uh, tradition exclusively to Christ. However, it was originally the Sibyls prior to Christ who were held for giving signs for who were held for giving sight to the blind, curing lameness, epileptics, deaf mutes, and lepers. They were said to quote cast out demons and even to raise up the dead. This last reference is probably meant to call upon and materialize the spirit of the dead person. For example, the the Cumanian Sibyl Herophile was famed for calling up the spirit of the apostle Samuel from the dead. This ancient ritual is still in practice today, performed by a sacred, sacred priestess known as Agamagetsi, uh, Amagasi, and the Mami uh, Wata Vudan traditions of West Africa. You see that? Um... We're gonna go here. Now, what I wanna do is, what I wanna do is, okay, so let's let's put this book to the side. The first prophetess of Mami Water, the Sibyls. We're gonna go into um, book one, right? And um, I'm going to read a couple of things. Okay. Um, show you a couple of images. You have here this image right here. Fragments of a mommy water goddess known generically as the snake goddess. Dated around 1000 BCE, allegedly these fragments were found in the ancient rituals, uh, in the ancient ruins of, of the palace of Minos, right? And then in figure two, they done European, they, they have Europeanized or, or whitewashed her, right? In figure two, and a mainly detailed Europeanized reconstruction of this same snake goddess, right? And We're gonna go here. Show some more images, right? Black Minoan goddess made of ivory. Time period not given. Okay. Um, we're gonna keep on going. Mommy Water, uh, uh, ancient mythical origins. Okay. Um, You've been you've been tricked. They tricked you. They tricked you. Um, one second. Here's here's the black Diana, right? The Black Diana. She went by many names: Artemis, Mermaid. Okay. Um. One second. I told you I was gonna. I told you I was gonna come back and bring some, some fire, some smoke. Now, what I want to do is, I hope you women are taking notes. Um. Okay. 
So this is book this is book one. You know, it's, it's a lot to go into. You know what I'm saying? I just want to show you some images here. Libyan Sybil on Sistine Chapel. It says below Michelangelo's. His, it says, enlargement of black Libyan civil prophetess with perhaps another civil draped in a white African wrap. I don't know if you can see that. Below Michelangelo's fantasy of black Libyan civil prophetess assign a meager place in, in the corner to the right. So now they done put, they done took the original out and whitewashed her and put her all in the background. Right? Um... Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to read this uh, real quick. I'm going to come back and make a part two. So like I said, this book one is, is a condensed version of this. I mean, uh, this by here is a condensed version of this book right here. Okay, so now we're going to get into the meat of the thing. When I come back in part two, we're going to delve back into book one and we're going to go into book two. So what happened? How did, how did the black woman fall? What happened? We're going to go, we're going to go into it right now. Listen to this. Take, look, listen, listen. Are you listening? Get you a piece of paper and a pen. Take notes. This is what happened. The visions in the Holy Empire. The, patriarch, the patriarchal revolts. The patriarchal revolts. Listen, are you listening? Listen, listen. I know you niggas' attention span is only five to ten seconds. Okay? Um. One second. Okay, let's go. Let's read this. Let me put a picture up here too, so you can see what's going on here. Just because everybody's, because you have black-skinned people, doesn't necessarily mean that they're, that they're good. You're gonna type in the name Pharaoh. See, I was talking about the good things Egypt, Egypt was going on in Egypt, but what about the bad stuff? So here's the here's the uh, image of of uh, Minis, or they call him Narma, right? He was Minis. He's the first, the so-called first pharaoh, and created the first dynasty, unified Upper and Lower Egypt. So here's here's Minis. Here's Narma, right? Now let's see what happened to the black woman. She was ruling every goddamn thing. Now when we say matriarchy. When we say matriarchy, we are saying, could you ask some men who were in matriarchy clans? So let's read what happened. How did she, how did she fall? We're gonna shit, we're gonna talk, we're gonna say it. Let's, let's read this shit. This shit's to piss you off. Listen to this. Before there were race and class wars, before there was race and class wars, the first human factional wars were gender. The first groups to engage in such warfare were the Africans. Let's go here to, to the Zionist Compact Bible Dictionary, right? And let's go to the word ham that everybody loves to quote, okay? 
right? And it says, Ham, the youngest son of Noah. Now, this so-called, this is so-called mythology. Born about 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, right? But the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. He, his, uh, whatever, right? So they say that he became the genitals of the dark race, not the Negroes. So we just read here that, that, uh, 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 we know that, that his three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, Japheth was a black man, right? Be going, be going off the mythology, right? And, and they excluded the nigger out. So we already read about the word ruddy, right? And ruddy goes back to dark-skinned Hebrews. Ruddy. To the dark skin of the Hebrews, right? So let's go. The Hebrews not excluded out of this shitty. They, they, it's it's their fault too. The reason we are in the shit we in today is because black folks, they fucked up. That's what happened. That's what happened. Listen to this shit. Yo, camps ain't saying this. Ask, ask these people who you subscribe to on these niggas channels and ask the ass. Ask the ass. Go go to your go to your G Dash the Prophet. Go to him, ask him what happened. He ain't gonna be able to tell you. Go to uh 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 Big Judah. Go to Big Judah, you niggas subscribe to him, go ask him what happened, he ain't gonna be able to tell you. Go to uh GMS group. Go to them, uh, GMS uh, uh, camp. Right, go, go, to, go to them. Go to them, they ain't gonna be able to tell you. Go to ICBK, go to them, ask them, they ain't gonna be able to tell you. Go to GOCC, ask them, they not gonna be able to tell you. Go to, uh, uh, what's that nigga name, True, True Fun Bell. I'm calling all you niggas out. Go to, go, to, go to these people's channels, they taking your money, they done set up Patreon pages and you fuckers are, are donating to their dumb ass, to, the, to their asses. You niggas are crazy. Listen to this shit. If they're not, if they're not acknowledging that the, that the black woman is God and they pushing that Yahweh Jehovah bullshit, you a fool. You crazy. Listen to this shit. Oh, part two coming. Part two coming. Before there were race and class wars, the first, the first human, the first human faction war was gender. The first groups to engage in such warfare was Africans. The first level of power in which in which control was sought was spiritual, economic, and, and political. It says Africans possessing the highest levels of spiritual, magical, and uh, mystical power and knowledge for centuries through their ambitious tutelary uh, and clan gods often competed and raged bitter spiritual warfare of mythological proportion against one another. These divine wars began as one between competing clan gods and soon escalated between what the gods had originally intended. The first apostasy or fall against the divine African mother appears to have taken place in Egypt. Historians, historians of ancient Egypt, when describing Egypt's rise as a global military power, often assume an amicable joining of upper and lower and lower Egypt of the king under King Menes hailing this event as the greatest political achievement in Egyptian history now we just looked up Menes this is normal you don't think your pharaohs and sinetters and, and uh, uh, polites you don't think these niggas know this shit let's keep on going okay uh, it says that um, hailing this event as the greatest political achievement in Egyptian history. This monumental event, the claim began the quote, golden age of military conquest and global expansion and the unchallenged rule of, of Egypt's patriarchal pharaohs. And according to the, and according to most, it established Egypt's uh, inviolable position as a as a legitimate legitimate world power. However, that is the view from history provided by the patriarchs. So you get so let me turn this shit down. So you are only getting history, history. But but what about her story? What happened to her? 
Where's her story at? How come we only getting his story? Well, in part two, you about to find out. I'm that real nigga to bring you that real heat, that shit, that fire. Stay tuned. I'm about to upload this shit right now on YouTube and on Bitchu. Stay tuned. You about to get what happened to the great mother, the woman. Part two coming. Stay tuned. Peace.